Joining us right now is uh, local Congressman Alex Mooney via telephone. Alex, good morning. Thanks for being with us again. Hey, good morning. Boy, that was a bit of an adventure, and uh, the video at the end of that uh, also included a little bit of a confrontation there. Is, it, was that as uh, direct as it looked to be on my Twitter feed, Alex, between uh, McCarthy and was it, was it Gatz? It was, uh, it, was a, it, was a, it was a gentleman named Congressman named Mike Rogers of Alabama. Tried to lun- look like he tried to lunge towards uh, Matt Gates of Florida. There Gates, the uh, how you pronounce it? Okay. Gates, yeah, Gates, yeah, yeah. All right, Gates. So, uh, can you? How close were you to that as it was occurring, and were you were you aware of it as it was going on? Uh, I wasn't aware of it until you know it had happened. Um, I saw the aftermath where uh, there was a member of Congress on the aisle there, a guy named Tim Burchett of Tennessee, who was just trying to keep the peace because Matt Gates, and actually sitting next to Matt Gates was Lauren Boebert of Colorado, who also had not been voting for Kevin McCarthy. She had switched to present, however, mm-hmm. which was helpful to him. Anyway, and uh, I think as as this guy from Alabama, Mike Rogers, tried to lunge through there towards Matt and scream at him, whatever he was going to do. Of course, he was restrained by my friend Richard Hudson of North Carolina, uh, uh, and and I heard Tim scream, not scream, but say very loudly, "Get get him out of here!" Referring to getting Congressman Mike Rogers out of here. It was very it was a very tenuous time, obviously. Uh, it seemed finally Kevin McCarthy would have the votes to become speaker because these, uh, these congressmen who had been doing it against him, the remaining six, it looked like they were going to vote either present or just uh, or vote for Kevin McCarthy. And I think, as I said on your, on, your, on your show you know, earlier in the week, voting present is a significant thing to do. I mean, that, when it gets close, if it were to get close, uh, instead of voting for a certain person, if you just don't vote at all or vote present, it lowers the number of votes needed. So in the end, as you saw, that's what the remaining six decided to do. But by Mike Rogers, you know, going after uh, Matt Gates like that, it almost turned it back against McCarthy because the individuals felt under attack, obviously and understandably. This is why we vote for a guy for speaker who has his supporters attacking us. And it would be understandable. Mm-hmm. So it, al- it almost, his actions almost ruined it for Kevin McCarthy. Uh, Mike, Mike Rogers' actions there. Literally almost cost Kevin McCarthy the speakership. He's lucky he didn't. That took place after the 14th vote where McCarthy fell one short, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Because he got it on the 15th, right? Yes, so, he got it on the 15th. Yeah. Yeah, it was after the 14th. I think that they thought Matt Gates was going to actually vote for Kevin on that on that last one. I, I don't know. This I don't know for sure, you know, what uh, what people thought or said. I wasn't in any any of those particular negotiations because I've been voting for Kevin the whole time. But I think that uh, they were hoping or planning or something for uh, for either Gates or Bober to, to, to vote. I guess it must have been Matt Gates to actually go ahead and vote for Kevin. He did not. He voted president instead, which means he was still a vote short. So then uh, after the, uh, I don't know, call it an attack, but, you know, the the incident where Rogers seemed to lunge at, at Gates and had to be restrained, we'll put it that way, um, the motion was actually to adjourn until Monday without a speaker. And that was, you know, none of that was expected. If you're asking anybody who this is happening, no, nobody knew this is happening. We're, you know, we were figuring this out one step at a time. And the motion was to adjourn until Monday. But then I guess at that point, the remaining people who had been voting against Kevin, the remaining four, decided to go ahead and end, end this whole thing and switch their votes to present which would lower by two the number of votes Kevin needed, which were the two votes he needed, so Kevin got it by two votes. Bill. And that's what happened. So yeah. voted, they voted not to adjourn, and then they voted for Kevin on the last ballot. <laughs> they, voted, they voted present. All six voted present. So at the end of the day, Mr. McCarthy got no votes against him from Republicans, which is quite a turnaround from where it was uh, several days before. Indeed. Uh, I, I give him a lot of credit for doing what he had to do to hang in there and, and get the votes he needed to be successful. It's a good sign, I think, for him. That, that he could, uh, despite having some opposition, uh, find a way forward. Because we have 222 Republicans, and, you know, we need 218 votes to do anything. Form a speaker, pass a bill, pass a motion. Now we got to vote on the rules bill later today. You need 218 votes for all that. You need a speaker who can put that coalition together. So my hope and prayer is this first vote shows that the coalition is there for Mr. McCarthy. Not for Mr. McCarthy, really. He's just the leader of the Republican Party right now as a speaker. This is this is for the you know the Republicans in this country and the people who voted Republican and gave us that majority. 
Yeah. Uh, good morning, Congressman. Uh, I'm glad you joined us again today. Uh, it was riveting last Friday night. I uh, I stayed up way past my bedtime uh, mm -hmm. uh, watching it. It was uh, very interesting. Uh, several questions, uh, one of which is, what actually drove this group of six to uh, change their mind and vote either president or, or for McCarthy? Uh, were the concessions made? Uh, there's a lot of talk about that uh, uh, Congressman McCarthy literally gave away the farm to get the concession, uh, but I'm sure there's different opinion on that. The uh, thing I'd really like to know is how's that going to impact future legislation, most notably something like the debt limit? Well, I mean, that was part of the push, and that's a great question, and thank you for that. I mean, part of the push of the remaining 20 who were who were reluctant to vote for Kevin McCarthy was they wanted to take this debt real seriously and, and you know, not pass bills that spend trillions of dollars that increase our debt and leverage the appropriations process to defend Americans, to, you know, from witch hunt investigations, raiding their homes, to, 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 to secure the border. These are the issues that we wanted to, you know, that all, all Republicans want to make sure we can actually address. So... Uh, I, I'm, you know, look, I wouldn't be in this business if I wasn't hopeful. I mean, there are some differences of opinions even among Republicans on certain things. Um, but we have to, uh, we have to, we have to address these. And I think Mr. McCarthy in his speech addressed some things that we all agree on. And he addressed, you know, controlling spending, controlling inflation, for example, securing the border, you know, no more vaccine mandates on people. Even the U.S. Capitol itself had been under restricted access all this time. That's over. The Capitol is wide open. You can tell, tell my constituents, your listeners right now, come on down to D.C. You can come to my office. You know, you, it's open. The Capitol is open for tours. It was terrible that the people's house had been uh, restricted access like that. So, you know, restoring freedom is important. I can't remember the first part of your question. I can try to address that, too. Well, no, the first part is what uh, what concessions were made uh, oh, okay. and what, what so, convinced so let, these number six to yeah. back off. Let me address that. So, so both sides have been saying these are, we don't, they don't like calling it concessions. There I see we've come to an agreement. The biggest agreement was simply empowering each and every member, frankly, Republican or Democrat. And the Democrats should be very thankful for the, for the reforms in there. As under Pelosi, it had been harder and harder for a member of Congress to even participate in debate and discussion. You know, you, all things like just offering an amendment to a bill that you think benefits your state or your constituents. Now, speaking on a bill, putting, getting a bill to the floor to be considered, those things have been just getting locked down more and more. We have a rules committee. That's controlled by the Speaker. They decide what bills come to the floor, if ever, and what amendments, if any, can be offered. And we've been getting away from what's called regular order, where bills go through committee, have open amendment process. So what I think the agreement is, the agreement, I want to call it a concession or, or, or a whatever, it's all an agreement. The agreement is Mr. McCarthy intends, as Speaker, to allow the process to be open, open and transparent. He said that in his speech, too. Transparent, and every member can participate. I think that's a great thing. Nobody really opposes that, Republican or Democrat. We just wanted to see it. I think the members that were voting, were not voting for him, wanted more assurances in that regard, and I think they received it, which is why 14 of them originally switched their votes to Kevin McCarthy. Well, towards the end, you know, after the 10th or so vote, 14 switched, and the remaining six decided, you know, I think came to the realization that, frankly, I was at from day one, and I told you this on the show, and I've told everybody, Somebody has to have 218 votes. I'd vote for Jim Jordan all day long. I love Jim Jordan. I'm a huge Jim Jordan supporter. But Jim Jordan was supporting Kevin McCarthy. Donald Trump was supporting and apparently making phone calls on behalf of Kevin McCarthy towards the end to make sure he got it. So, you know, we understand. We're, we're grown-ups. We're big men and women. We understand to govern, you have to have 218. It took some struggles to get there, some understandings and some learn to trust each other. Uh, I think it's a shame it came to that. I think, frankly, uh, Mr. McCarthy, if I've been advising him, he should have agreed to some of these things right away. Maybe we could have avoided all this. But, you know, this, you had to go through this process, apparently. You had a question from John Gilstrap. Um, Congressman Mooney, how are you? This is uh, John Gilstrap. Of the, hey, John. of the concessions that I've heard about, the one I think that concerns me the most is the change that allows a single member of Congress to raise a motion to vacate which I presume then triggers parliamentary stuff that has to happen. Isn't this a, a, an invitation for delay tactics over and over again? So, again, this goes back to and we call, what I call an agreement. <laughs> I just I don't want to call it a concession. But the, the understanding of the agreement is that this goes back to empowering individual members. 
a, a member can simply make that motion. There's a lot of other motions members can make. You can make a motion to adjourn. You can make a motion to uh, shut off debate and move the previous question. You can make a motion to recommit a bill to committee. Any member can make that motion. Any one member can make a motion. But just because you make a motion doesn't mean the motion passes. It's majority rule in a democracy, Republican form of government with Democrat process. You still need 218 votes. So if some Democrat member of Congress gets up and makes a motion to vacate the chair, the Republicans would vote against it, obviously. It wouldn't pass. So it's kind of a pointless motion to make unless you actually have the votes to remove the chair. And that means throughout the speaker. And this motion, you know, has existed since the founding of our country up until 2019 when Nancy Pelosi changed it. So I just think restoring that motion the way it has been throughout all of history, except the last four years when Pelosi changed it, I think it's a good thing. Uh, I actually think Mr. McCarthy should have agreed to that from, from day one. That motion existed when Paul Ryan was speaker for four years. It was never even used when Paul Ryan was speaker, all four years. It was used one time, the motion was made, uh, when John Boehner was speaker. Boehner just chose to resign. Uh, that was his choice. We never actually voted on the motion, so I can't tell you if the motion would have passed or not. But I know I am for that. I'm for that, and, and Mr. McCarthy himself has said he's not afraid of it. You know, he, he knows he has to have majority support. I think it was a good thing. I think we have time for one more question. Do you have a follow-up to that, John? Not a follow-up to that. I'm just curious. The the 19 that originally voted against uh, uh, Cong- uh, Senator McCarthy's Mr. McCarthy. Cong- yeah. yes, his leadership, <laughs> Kevin McCarthy's leadership. Uh, yeah. How much of that do you think was just posturing? Was was this a heartfelt, fundamental disapproval of the man, or was it just an, an effort to leverage concessions? Uh, so I believe Excuse of the me, 20, I think, yeah, that's, that's a very good question. I would say of the 20, I wouldn't put them all in the same group. I mean, everyone had different maybe views on it. Uh, in the end of the, it was 20 because Byron Donald switched to voting against them. So I'd say of the 20, uh, 14 were simply looking for improvements in the rules and the way the House operates, it appears, because 14 did switch and vote for him. The remaining six who, who only ever voted president, never voted for Mr. McCarthy, I think they had bigger concerns beyond the process. I think they had concerns about whether or not McCarthy himself, as Speaker, would enforce the rules. Because you can, you, can, you can waive the rules, too. When you talk about a motion to vacate the chair, on the other hand, uh, you can waive rules all the time. Like one of the rules is you need 72 hours. Any bill that we're going to vote on, the, the rule set, the, this new rule, a new rule says we need 72 hours. It used to be three days, but three days you can play games with that. You bring it out at 11.50 at night, that's day one. Then 20, 24 and a half hours later, it's on day three. You don't get 72 hours. So anyway, one of the rules is 72 hours to read a bill before you have to vote upon it. No one really disagrees with that. But those rules can be waived if you're in a hurry and the Speaker wants to waive it. Um, so some of these rules that were being promoted, once those rules were agreed to, 14 of them came on board. I think the remaining six who still voted didn't vote for Kevin, they were concerned beyond rules. I think they were just concerned about Kevin's leadership himself. Not They, didn't, they weren't looking for an agreement or rules changes. They just thought we needed a different Speaker. But even those remaining six in the very end agreed to just vote present so that we could resolve it and have a speaker and do our best going forward. Uh, Alex, thanks so much for your time this morning. As always, very much appreciated. And uh, please say hi to your mom for me.